tell you guys. Yeah. Just think, I don't have to call you Mr. Douglas anymore, Dad. And this is the first time in my life I've ever used the word daughter. Hey, that's right. Well, I look at it like this. I may be losing a brother, but I'm gaining a room. Oh, honey, I just want to go thank you. Okay. Oh, Dad. I just wanted to say thanks, Dad, for everything. Well, Mike, there's nothing to thank me for. The bride's parents saw us pay for the wedding. All I did was stand around and nod. No, Dad, I mean for everything. For putting up with me. Especially in the last few years with the guitar lessons and hot rod cars. Everything. It all comes back double, Mike. Who'd have thought my number one son would turn out to be an assistant psychology instructor back east? I'm proud of you, Mike. For a lot of things. Sally, I want a shot of Mike taking you to the car. Come on, Mike. Get Come, on, Muriel. Come on, now, big smile. <laughs> big smile. Come on, Come on. Come on. Everybody follow. Come on. Yeah. Hey, I think we're supposed to take the rice out of the bags. I want them to feel it when I hit them. Here they go. I got some great pictures. I oh, good. Come on. Come on, Jeff. Come on, Lord. One less kid I'll have to clean up after. Yeah, I suppose you could look at it that way. Come on, Ernie. Let's go get something to eat. How can you fellas eat again? You just had four pieces of wedding cake apiece. <laughs> <laughs> well, Charlie, it was a, a nice wedding, wasn't it? Yeah. Pretty soon now, Chip and Robbie will be uncles, and I'll be a great-great-uncle. And we'll be calling you Grandpa. Huh, Grandpa. Yeah, that's what they call a guy when his kids have kids. I don't. <laughs> Unless you want to go high class and have them call you grandfather. Grandpa. <laughs> you lose your nose or something? No, no, I was just... Uh... What were you saying, Charlie? I was saying this little Ernie is a bad influence on Chip. He got him giggling in church, practically right on top of the I do's. Well, I guess giggling in church has been going on for a long time, Charlie. And it probably wasn't Ernie's fault any more than it was Chip's. It's one of those things where you get started and you can't stop. <laughs> I know, but just the same. Yeah? Yeah, Chip? Is it okay if Ernie stays here a couple of days? Well, yes, I guess so. How come you're asking? He usually walks right in and picks out a bed. <laughs> well, he can't anymore. A bunch of junk's going on at his house. Uh, what do you mean, a bunch of junk's going on at his house? What kind of junk? Important junk. Oh, now we know. Hey, Jasper, if you want to dust the floor, go get a mop. Not your best suit. <laughs> well, I'm telling you, these kids now, they... What are you looking at in that mirror? An aging man, Charlie. <laughs> An aging, aging man. <laughs> still stuck here because they're signing papers and junk in the house. How come? It's a thing that's going on. Ernie, come here. I gotta go. Come on in. There's some cake in the thing. Hi, Mom. Hi, Miss Coulter. Hello, dear. Hello, Ernest. Now, I have something to discuss with you. You know Mr. Thompson's firm has transferred him to the Orient, don't you? Yes, ma'am. And I know I can't go along. Because the county doesn't allow foster kids out of the county or something. And that's why we can't take you with us, dear. But Miss Coulter's going to find you some nice new foster parents. Where will I live this time? We'll find you a wonderful family. Around here? Well, we'll try. Will you write to me in junk? Oh, Ernie. <gasps> Excuse me, Mom. Hey, boy. Yeah. Hello, uh, Googie. <laughs> How are you, Googie? This is Steve. Uh, Steve Douglas. Are oh, you... Well, I'm fine. Yeah, I guess it is kind of a surprise. I, uh, haven't called you in some time. I... Has it been 20 years? <laughs> oh. uh, what happened? Oh, you were getting ready to bathe your what? 
your grandchildren? And they just ran out the front door without their clothes on. Well, sure, 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 I understand. I, I can call you back some other time. Yes, well, of course I understand. Yeah, goodbye. Twenty years? You don't have to look so rotten. I only had them for a little while. You've had other parents? Sure. People get paid for taking care of kids like me. And they're always real nice. Who pays them? A thing called the county. They try to give us kids with golf books to people instead of putting us in a big building. I saw the building. It's pretty neat. You think that lady will find the other frosted parents around here so you get to go to the same school? Foster, not frosted. <laughs> well, anyway, how do you know there's somebody around here that'll let you live with them? I've been thinking. There isn't. The only people that like kids are those two old ladies clear over on Lester Street. And if I lived over there, I'd have to go to Susan B. Dorsey School. And I'd rather get shot in my stomach than go to a creepy school like that. Yeah, I remember. They got girls over there that kiss you for no reason at all. Yeah. Anyway, you better not tell that lady from the county that you're going to be staying in my house for a couple of days. Okay. Well, as I remember, she had light hair. Uh, well, she was a blonde. And, uh, and she wasn't too tall. Uh, you don't. I see. Well, thank you very much. What's that you just hid? Hmm? Well, uh, nothing that we understood in Charlie. Mm, well, when somebody ducks something out of sight the minute I walk in, I'm interested. No, no, just a, uh, a little black book. It then. is not a little black book. It happens to be a book I have with some addresses of old friends. I've had it for years. Shirley Mashin, Angela Downs, Flora McBride, Googie Dutton. Goopy. Yes, Goopy. <laughs> Hey, you're not calling these tomatoes, are you? What's wrong with renewing old friendships? Nothing, but by the looks of this book, I think you picked the right word. Old. <laughs> you know, there's an old Chinese saying I learned on the Kowloon Ferry. When the ink turns brown, the girl is over the hill. <laughs> hey, how many times have I told you guys to use the back door? I just cleaned the rug. Yeah, but you said guests could use the front door, Uncle Charlie. What guests? All I see is you and our star border. You saw it because we're not in school today. Yeah, I know. And no shoes on the sheets. And I want to show you something. I bought a black towel yesterday, and when you wash your hands, I want you to use it. <laughs> Could I talk to you for a minute? Sure, Rob. What's on your mind? Well, Dad, I, uh... I overheard a couple of things, and I, uh... I saw you look into the mirror a few times, and, uh... Well, Dad, I... I think we ought to talk it out. Well, I, uh, appreciate your great concern, Rob, but, uh, I'll survive. Well, sure, Dad, you'll survive, but, uh... Dad, all I'm saying is, you're a young man. You don't have to go around and, and call all these old girlfriends. Rob, I told Charlie, and I'm telling you. I was merely trying to renew old friendships, that's all. But, Dad, why worry about renewing old friendships when you can go out and make new ones? <laughs> Dad, stop taking those ladies who cropped up their lectures and roundtable discussions. Well, there are some great spots in town. We like the giggle a go go. The giggle a go go? <laughs> Rob, that, uh, that might work for you. But... Well, can you see a man of my age going to a place called the Giggle A Go Go? Dad, I'm not saying that the Giggle A Go Go is the only place. There are other places. Oh, I could write out a whole list of other places. Well, don't bother. Look, will you please stop giving me romance lessons or whatever you're doing? Dad, I'm just trying to tell you that I think you should think young. There, there's nothing like a, a place like the Giggle A Go Go to make a guy feel young. Okay, Dad, I'm, I'm going, I'm going. But first, listen to this. Young lady, uh, would you mind telling me where you bought that Shh. sweater? I'm thinking of getting one just like it for my sister. Now, you see, you flatter her taste. And at the same time, when you say sister instead of wife, she knows that you're... Good night, Rob. <laughs> what, is Robbie still telling your dad how he's young and he should go around kissing girls and junk? Yeah, the minute he got into college, he started talking a lot. <laughs> I don't know, but you better not put Wilson down until I find him. 
Well, I wish Tramp and Wilson wouldn't fight all the time. It makes Uncle Charlie mad. It makes Wilson bleed a lot. <laughs> okay, you can put Wilson down. Well, I guess we finally got you moved in. Yeah. <sighs> Wilson, if Tramp picks a fight with you again, you gotta not fight back. Because you're not supposed to be here at all. Come on, get down now, boy. <laughs> So the next time you're in a restaurant or something and a, and a girl is sitting next to you, don't say something like, it's a nice day or some unimaginative stuff like that. Say something like, uh, what shade of blue is that dress you're wearing? I'm thinking of incorporating it into an airplane I'm designing. Oh, come on, <laughs> Don't you see? You flatter her because you like the color she's wearing and at the same time, you let her know that you're not a librarian or something. <laughs> now, believe me, most women flip over anybody who has anything to do with it. Would you plans. mind if we continued this seminar some other time? I have some reading to do. Yeah, okay. Now, Dad, just quit thinking old, huh? And quit going out with crop dusters like that Alice Bredwall that you keep hauling off to dinner. <laughs> crop duster? Yeah, that's a, that's a thing we say. <laughs> Dad, here's something else you can say when you're meeting someone. Good night, Rob. Okay, Dad. Good night. Hey, Dad, here's another. You're in a corridor and this beautiful blonde is walking by. Good night, Rob. Yeah. Well, uh, good night. think the kid would think of somebody else but himself once in a while. Well, Mike and Sally just got married yesterday. Sure, but how long does it take to send a wire saying they got there safe, wherever they went? Uh, no more for you. Uh, and another thing. How come Tramp spent the night trying to get in bed with me? <laughs> I must have forgotten lock my door. Yeah, well, don't forget it tonight. It's like sleeping with a camel. <laughs> Dad, are you uh, going to work today? Yes, I'm going to work, Rob. Well, it's a holiday. I mean, there's no school. Why don't somebody tell me these things? I made three lunches. <laughs> Today's the day our state got led into the Union. They call it a mission day for some reason. Maybe the rest of the country charged us admission to get in. <laughs> well, in mission day or not, I have to go out to the plant. Well, Dad, as, uh, as long as you're going to work, why don't you try some of those uh, approaches we were discussing? Uh, no, thanks. <laughs> nice breakfast, Charlie. Dad, uh, don't think of it as chasing. Think of it as an experiment in, in contact psychology. I'll uh, see you fellas later. Steve, no use letting good food go to waste. Oh, well, thanks anyway. What's the sorry. matter? You too proud to eat out of a paper bag? Here, eat it in the park, in the sunshine, where the old guys sit. <laughs> you still think it's dumb to go back to your house just to get a skateboard that's already busted. When guys ask me to go skateboard riding, I show them how busted it is. And I don't have to get killed trying to ride it. Yeah, well, just the same. Hey, look. There's that lady. Not a sign of this culture. I don't understand it. His bicycle is here. Yeah. Better give me that description again. Well, he stands about uh, that high. Boy, she's sicking the police on you. Yeah, you must be a detective. Come on. Eating in today, Mr. Douglas? Uh, yes. When I left the house this morning, there were... Uh, well, it's uh, admission day. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Miss Fisher? Yes, Mr. Douglas. That uh, dress you're wearing, uh, what shade of red would you say that was? Just red, red. Well, I, I, I thought maybe it had a particular name, like, uh, well, like Chartreuse. I, I, of course, I know that's a shade of green or, or yellow. And... Oh, it really doesn't make much difference to me. I'm colorblind. <laughs> Douglas, would you mind telling me where you got that sweater? 
<laughs> That's funny. I was just going to ask. Uh, no, I'd be very happy to. Hello. I was thinking of getting one like it for my boyfriend. <laughs> Good night, Mr. Uh, Miss Worth. Yes. Uh, that bag you're carrying, it's, uh, it's leather, isn't it? Good night. <laughs> Shh. Maybe it's just your dad. Where will we find out? You fellas all right in there? Yeah, Dad, we're just horsing around. Hey, Dad. Oh, hi, Ron. Dad, look at this. I cut some stuff out of the papers. Man becomes grandfather at 33. Yeah. What about it? Well, don't you see, Dad? This goes to show you that grandfather is a word that doesn't always mean old. Here's another one. Here's a woman that's 35 years old, and she's already a grandmother. She's also an acrobat, you yeah. see? Here's another one, Dad. This guy is 85 years old, and he swims two miles a day. Dad, don't you see? Age has nothing to do with it. It's all in the mind. Robbie, I'm tired, and I'd like to take a shower. I appreciate what you're trying to do for me, but... Well, I'll have to work out my physical and mental collapse on my... Oh, wait, Dad. Listen, I've got this program worked out that'll have you back on your feet in no time at all. Now, right after dinner... Now, Dad, suppose you're out some night with this terrific girl, and she wants to dance. If the combo's playing some piece like this, well, you've got to be ready for it. Well, I'm never going to be ready for that. Well, you won't unless you try, Dad. Now, come on, just try once, will you? Rob, I told just you I don't... Just Dad, I won't, won't be but... hard. Come on down, Dad. Now lift your hand. Now jerk it down. <laughs> jerk your hands down. Tap your back. I snapped my back 20 years ago. That's why I won't snap now. <laughs> lift your hands higher. Pull them down. Like you're pulling on a rope or something. Come on, Dad. You can do it if you try. That's it. Uh, lift your hands. Oh. Lift them up higher. <laughs> How do you do? I'm Ernestine Coulter. Jerk your hands down. Uh, Dad, you gotta snap your back. Now, come on, Dad, you gotta lift your hands higher. Oh, this hands have to come up. Rob. Dad, it's start up. That's it. Now, drip down. You gotta do the snap in the head. You see? Now, watch. My, see my back? It starts with the back and comes up. up. This is a pretty Dad. peculiar time of night to be selling briefcases, honey. Look at my neck. Look at my head, Dad. See it snap? It starts in the back like a bullwhip. And you jerk it down like this. Oh, no, I'm not, I'm not selling briefcases. We were, uh, we were just, uh, uh, could I help you? Yes, do you know anything of the whereabouts of an Ernest Thompson? An Ernest Thompson? You make him sound like an object. You think he's gonna tell? Sure, he has to. He's a dad. I have been to every house within four blocks. Do you know the boy? No, sure, we don't. He's a friend of my son's. Fine. If you see him again, would you please call me at this number? Yes. I'm sorry I interrupted your... whatever it was you were doing. Boy, he didn't tell. How come you didn't say anything about the little squirt being upstairs? Well, she didn't really give me a chance, Charlie. Children's Welfare Unit, Kings County. Ernestine Coulter. Dad, uh, if you don't mind my saying so, you just didn't make the right moves with her. Now, what you should have said was, uh, come on in. By the way, uh, one of our most attractive secretaries wears her hair just like that. Now, you see, Dad, by saying... <laughs> but why didn't you tell me the truth in the first place? Well, Guy, your dad knew what I had to call that lady. It would have taken Ernie away and put him in, well, like a jail. Well, Chip, the county home isn't like a jail. I happen to know it's quite a nice place. Sure it is. Miss Coulter is a nice lady. Well, I don't think they let me take Wilson to the county home. Yeah, Dad. It's all they can do to get rid of kids down there. Kids with dogs have to wait longer to get a frost at home. I mean, foster home. You've uh, had foster parents before, Ernie. Yeah. Will you explain to them at the home that I gotta have Wilson with me, Mr. Douglas? Yes, I will, Ernie. Now, you fellas understand. Ernie can stay here tonight, but uh, I'll have to call Miss Coulter in the morning. Yeah. I guess we busted the law enough already. Boy, Dad. How come some kids have all the parents they want? Ernie hasn't even got one. Well, that's, uh, that's the way things work out sometimes. But you know something? Some of the greatest men in our country were orphans. <laughs> Maybe that'll happen to Ernie. Maybe it will. Yeah, Mr. Bassler says I'm already the best towel collector he ever had in the boys' gym. <laughs> Good night, fellas. I did.
Night. How's it going in there, Dad? Well, Ernie seems to be taking it in stride. Chip's the one who's upset. Yeah, well, that's because we've always been a sensitive family. Yeah. Dad, uh, you know that Miss Coulter isn't exactly a crop duster, and, uh, well, I think you ought to just play it cool. Well, I mean, maybe flub up a little grammar, you know, like saying things like, uh, he don't and you was, and stuff like that. You want me to say things like, he don't and you was, and things like that to her? Yeah, Dad, you ought to try it, because maybe she's the motherly type, and, you know, they like to correct mistakes. Oh. <laughs> Come in. Dad? What's wrong, Jude? Dad, Ernie's crying. Oh? He's pretending not to, but I can tell. Wow. Well, little guy. I didn't say anything rotten or hit him or anything, Dad. No, I know you didn't, Jude. It's kind of chilly. Why don't you climb into my bed for a minute? I'll go talk to him. Ernie? Yes, sir. Ernie, uh, when you leave here tomorrow, you don't think we're just going to let you disappear, do you? I mean, we'll be seeing you. After all, you won't be very far away because, uh, well, you'll be in the county, and the county isn't very big, is it? No. You know, Ernie, we're never really alone, even though it seems that way sometimes. We all have friends who remember us and who think about us. And you have a lot of friends, Ernie. You have uh, Uncle Charlie and Robbie and Chip and me and uh, Tramp and Wilson. Huh? And you have a lot of friends in school. Why, but you know all kinds of kids who miss you when you're absent for one day. Yeah, I guess. And uh, your teachers? And uh, Mr. Bastler in the gym? You know, Ernie, you're just a young fellow, but you've made all these friends already. Did you ever think of that? No. And how about my clarinet teacher? Sure, your clarinet teacher and Mike and Sally, huh? Yeah, and when they have kids, I'll have all them for friends. Yeah, yeah. And uh, don't forget, Ernie, when things get rough, I, you always have a friend you can pray to. Oh, I already did that. Oh, you did? I prayed for you to come in here. Well, you know, Ernie, that's the nicest compliment I ever had. Why don't you lie down and go to sleep, right? Yes, sir. Good night. Mr. Douglas? Yeah, honey. Would it be baby if I asked you to stay in there for a while? I mean, just till I go to sleep. <laughs> no, it wouldn't be baby at all, Ernie. I'll be right here. Good night, Mr. Douglas. Good night, Ernie. Charlie. Hey, how come Ernie's all dressed up? The county lady's coming to redistribute him. Relocate. Well, Ernie, you're going to be staying in a new home or in that building downtown? Uh, Rob. Uh, it's okay, Mr. Douglas. He can talk about it. Rob, I, uh, I called Miss Colder last night after Ernie had gone to sleep, and uh, she tells me the county has a sort of relocation center. I'm sure they'll find him a good home. Just as nice as the home you had when you lived down the street, Ernie. Well, suppose these new people go to Japan or something, like Ernie's other parents did. Well, what happens to Ernie then, Dad? Then they relocate me again. It isn't all sweetness and light when you're in the orphan game. Uh, Dad, can I see a minute in the living room? Oh, uh, sure, Chip. To tell my dad some junk about some bad grades, I think I'm gonna get an ounce of it. Okay. Can I have that piece of burnt toast over there? 
It's not burnt. It's just a little well done. My teacher says carbon's good for the teeth. <laughs> Dad, if you had a friend who was looking for a room, and you knew somebody that had a brother that just got married, and they had this room, and his other brother moved into it, and that left a whole empty bed, what would you do? Chip, how are your marks in grammar at school? Okay. Dad, suppose you were this I kid. I know what you're trying to say, Chipper. And I guess I do exactly the same thing. Try to find some way of having my friend use that extra bed. Hey, Nate. But, Chip, there are several problems. One, the county has its own rules and regulations about the boarding of children. Two, would it be wise to have Ernie stay here until they find a foster home for him? Why couldn't we be his foster home? Well, I don't know, Chip. There's so many things to consider. Well, he could stay right up in my room. And he could go to the same school he's been going to. And if he eats too much, I'll pay for it out of my allowance. And then, Chip, we uh, have a problem with Uncle Charlie. What? Well, Ernie seems to rub him the wrong way. Oh, uh, sometimes Uncle Charlie hates Robbie even worse. <laughs> you know, Dad, we got a real terrible problem. Uncle Charlie doesn't like anybody. Well, sometimes it looks that way, Chip, but uh, he really does. Uncle Charlie is what is known as a crusty character with a heart of gold. <laughs> <laughs> Charlie! You want to hear a story that'll tear your heart out? Oh, Uncle Charlie went to the stove for something and Wilson got in between his legs. And then Tramp got in from someplace and Uncle Charlie fell on the floor for some reason. For some reason? Your fat-headed dog tripped me. And then Tramp and Wilson had this fight right on top of Uncle Charlie. How come Uncle Charlie's all wet? Because your friend soaked me with a pan of dirty dishwater, that's why. <laughs> Well, I, come on, come on and help me up there, will you? Uncle Charlie, he was just trying to stop the fight. Yeah, well, he just started one. Hey, Steve, you and me have got to have a little talk. Shouldn't it be you and I? Uh, uh, I think maybe you and Chip better go up to your room for a little while. Hmm? Okay, Mr. Douglas. Hello, Wilson. Is Uncle Charlie sore about something? I guess maybe you shouldn't have thrown the water on him. <laughs> Steve, you know what I'm going to do with that kid? I'm going to take him to Zanzibar or someplace and put him up for the slave market. And then I'm going to buy him myself for a dime because that's all he's worth. And then I'm going to feed him to the buzzards because they have some of the greatest buzzards in Zanzibar you ever heard of. And when they get through with them, then Charlie, I'm going to... Charlie, I don't blame you for being upset. Well, what am I supposed to do? Be grateful because he nearly broke my back and then tried to drown me? But well, it was just an accident. Little boys do things before they think sometimes. I'll get it. Charlie, uh, sit down, will you? I want to talk. To I you. can take whatever you got to say standing up. Hello. Hi. I'm Miss Coulter from the County Children's Welfare Department. I'm here about Ernest Thompson. Oh, fine. I mean, uh, it's well. Won't you please come in, Miss Coulter? Thank you. I'll, uh, I'll go get my dad. Is anything wrong? No. I mean, uh... Well, no. I'll look at my dog. Well, let's put it this way. You keep that little joker in this house, and you look for a new maid. Uh, Dad. Uh, just a minute, bro. Charlie, the county may not even consider it, but I think we ought to explore the possibility. Uh, Dad. You explore. My exploring license just expired. Dad. What's eating you? Well, nothing. Dad, Miss Coulter's here. Oh. Uh, Dad. Now, you remember a while back when we had that talk about you being too old on his own in your head? Robbie, let's not go into that again. Hmm? I have now decided that I'm not quite that old and I may survive the next couple of weeks. But, Dad, you still have this weird idea that you're not young enough to go out and meet new girls. Well, let's talk about it later. Hmm? But, Dad, you're too late. She's here now. Now's the time to combine business with pleasure. And, by the way, I noticed you wasn't wearing a wedding. Well, that's true. What are you? Dear Miss Lonely Hearts, all of a sudden, let your dad go out there and talk to the dame. <laughs> Charlie's right. And tell her to take Ernie and Coolidge or whatever his name is out of here or else. Well, Miss Calder, I'm sorry to have kept you waiting. We were having a little discussion in the kitchen. That's all right, Mr. Douglas. Is Ernest ready? Yes, I'm sure he's ready. Uh, Ernie, Miss Calder's here. Coming. Ernie seems to handle his uh, adjustments pretty well. I mean, uh, moving from house to house like this. Oh, he's had two foster homes before. Uh, one when he was very small and uh, the one you're familiar with. We were hoping the Thompsons would be able to adopt him, but economic pressures prevented it. I see. I think we've found him a very good home now. Well, I'm glad to hear that. Hi, Miss Coulter. Hello, Ernest. You can call me Ernie if you want to. When people call me Ernest, I feel like I'm going to get in trouble. All right, Ernie. And you can call me Ernie. How can? How come? Well, it's short for Ernestine. <laughs> you ready to go? 
Yes, ma'am. Thanks for letting me stay and everything, Mr. Douglas. And I'll write you guys. And you can sell my skateboard and junk chip. And I think it's neat you're finally getting to go to college, Robbie. And thanks for not smacking me when I made you lose your temper, Uncle Charlie. I outweigh you. It wouldn't have been fair. I know you never liked me and Wilson, but I was hoping to be around long enough to grow on you. Better luck next time. Mind shaking hands goodbye? Goodbye. So long, Ernie. So long, Chip. Well, now, we better go. Bye, Ernie. Come on, Wilson. Oh, Ernie, um, you're not going to be able to take the dog. But it's the only family I got left. Well, they don't allow dogs at the relocation center, Ernie. You know that. Hey, I tell you what. I'll ask your new foster family and see if we can't take him there, okay? No. I mean, no, man. He gets scared real easy and everything. Oh, don't you worry, Ernie. We'll take care of Wilson for you until you go to your new home. You will? Oh, sure we will, Ernie. Chip knows what he likes to eat. And... Yeah, I'll let him sleep on my feet and everything. Hmm. That means Tramp gets in bed with me. I guess I can stand it for a while. Well. Goodbye. Well, it's like Ernie said, it's not all sweetness and light in the orphan game. Yeah. How you could let that woman haul that kid out of here without raising a hand is clear beyond me, Steve. But, Charlie, you were the one that said you'd leave if you stayed. Since when did anybody ever pay any attention to what I said around here? Dad, here's what you should say to him. Play it real smooth, sir. Uh, hello, I would like to speak to you about Ernie, but I'm afraid my time is limited. How about lunch? Oh, would you please go away? Okay, Dad, uh, then don't play it real smooth, but at least take her out to lunch. Uh, hello, I'd like to speak to Miss Coulter, please. Dad, honestly... Please go away, will you? Please? But, Dad, there, there's, there's something about kicking things around at lunch that, that beats staring at a picture of President Washington in somebody's office. <laughs> hey, I'm going. Oh, uh, hello, Miss Coulter. Lunch. <laughs> this is Mr. Douglas, uh, Stephen Douglas. Oh, Mr. Douglas. How are you? I'm fine. Uh, Miss Calder, after you left, it occurred to me that, uh, well, we might make some other arrangements about Ernie. Uh, how is he, by the way? Uh, he's um, a little homesick for his dog, and he misses your son, Chunk, but otherwise he's fine. It's uh, Chip, Miss. Uh, <laughs> what? Uh, it's Chip, not Chunk. <laughs> oh, yes. Is there something you wanted, Mr. Douglas? Well, uh, we thought we might be able to board Ernie here for a while and uh, maybe eventually make this his foster home, if that's possible. Oh? Could we discuss it? Oh, yes, of course. Uh, when would be a good time for you? Lunch! Uh, well, uh, I'll be busy working all morning. The uh, only time I have free, I'm afraid, is around noon. Uh-huh. Well, uh... Why don't we uh, talk it over over lunch? Over what? Lunch. The blue candle. Yes, how about the blue candle? <laughs> oh, yes, that would be fine. Yes, I I'll meet you there. Fine, about uh, one o'clock. Good. <laughs> Never for one this year? Oh, right now I'm worried about bumping into a post or something. Oh, the eyes become accustomed quickly. Table for one. You're safe, Mr. Douglas. This is the gentleman I was expecting. Oh, hi. I can't see you very well, but I recognize the voice. I had the same trouble when I came in here. Oh. Can you see better now? Yeah, a little. You know, I think I've always had slow eyes. Remember when I was a kid and I'd go to a matinee movie? I'd go in out of the sunshine, and I'd have a dickens of a time finding a seat. <laughs> you, uh, you look fine. Thank you. So do you. Thank you. 
Well, shall we order? Yeah, yeah. Hi. Hi. Wilson feels kind of clunky. Think we ought to call the vet or something? No, he just misses Ernie. Think Dad will get that Miss Coulter to let Ernie stay with us? Well, I hope so, but that's only half the problem. What's the other half? Well, ever since Mike got married, Dad's been thinking he's an old man. He is. <laughs> you think he's old because you're still a squirt. Excuse me, Chip, I've got a little maneuvering to do. Don't worry, Wilson. Dad will get Ernie back. A phone call for you from uh, London, Mr. Douglas. From London? <laughs> well, nobody knows I'm here. Secretaries have a way of finding people. Uh, uh, hello. Now, don't act surprised or anything, Dad. It's just me. Uh, why are you uh, calling me here? Dad, now listen. It doesn't hurt to impress girls when you take them out, so will you just call me Lord Stimson real loud so she can hear you? Uh, look, Lord Stimson, uh, I'd rather not discuss it right now. Uh, why don't I call you back uh, later in the day, hmm? Hey, did they put you at one of those tables where it looks like you're eating near the river? Uh, yes, as a matter of fact, they did. Uh, now, Dad, when you get through talking about Ernie, tell her she has real neat hair. <laughs> I think it's too early in your relationship to uh, pull the beautiful eyes bit. Well, why don't you tell her that she looks like someone you had a crush on? Uh, Lord Stimson, if you don't mind, I'd like to handle this in my own way. <laughs> but, Dad, you... Dad? <laughs> He's stubborn. <laughs> Thank you, monsieur. Oh, it's uh, quite a character, Stimson. I uh, still don't know how you knew I was here. Well, Miss Calder, uh, what do you think? About Ernie, I mean. Oh, well, I, I don't know. You see, there's no woman in your home. Well, there hasn't been a woman in our home in 11 years. And the uh, county wouldn't take my other boys away because of that, would they? Oh, no, of course not. It's just that the Children's Welfare Department does have its rules. Yes, I know. Perhaps I could refer your case to Miss Miller. Miss Miller? Uh, my department head. She's very strict where rules are concerned, but she's a very nice person. I'm sure she is. She might drop in on you. Oh, you mean uh, to sort of check us out? Yes. Well. It's a lovely restaurant, isn't it? Do you get the feeling that you're sitting next to the Seine? Yes. <laughs> you have very neat hair. <laughs> Shall we go? Yes. Paris calling, Monsieur Douglas. You know someone in Paris, too? Uh, just someone named Cupid. Would you do me a favor? Tell him you're Monsieur Douglas and sing the Marseillaise to him. Hello? I am Monsieur Douglas. Hello, <laughs> son You gotta cut them rags up and spoil my vacuum job, huh, Chip? The cloth is to show how air pushes junk when you type to the fan. School projects are always a mess. You got enough strips there to open up a ribbon store. <laughs> hey, Commodore, you couldn't repair the Queen Mary out in the garage, could you? It's cold out there, and cold makes the glue dry too fast. Answers. You ask questions, all you get is answers. <laughs> How do you do? I'm Miss Miller. <laughs> What's the matter with you guys? What are you sitting down at the table for if you're not hungry? 
All right, Uncle Charlie. Yeah. yeah, me too. Well, there's no use crying over spilled beer. Chip had a pick last night to fly ribbons, and Robbie had to launch that balloon he caused a raft, and you look like one of those desert rats I keep seeing on that late show. Hi, Uncle Charlie. You have the shirts all over the place. Chip, the only one I'm concerned about is Ernie. Well, look, uh, Dad, he'll be all right, won't he? I mean, uh, didn't you tell us that Miss Coulter had another family lined up? Would you excuse me, please? Me too. Aren't you hungry either, Uncle Charlie? Yeah, I'm hungry. I just don't feel like eating. Miss Miller. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm, I thought so. I thought so. Now, that was quite a chivalry you threw last night. <laughs> Miss Ada, I guess our timing was a little off. Miss Coulter may have told you I'm a little unorthodox. But I say that any house that's as clean as this at 8 o'clock in the morning can't be all bad. How often do things explode around here the way they oh, did last night? not more than once a month, Miss Miller. I, I, well, it varies, but I can assure you we... Don't assure me anything, young man. I never listen to words. I observe. Besides, I had five brothers. We... We can't allow you to adopt the boy because I understand there's no woman in the house. But... How about a trial foster home situation? Now, mind you, I said trial. Now, there's a nice day. Yeah. We'd like that very much, Miss Miller. Uh, when do we get her any? Uh, can we pick him up? Or? There's no need for that. All right, Miss Calder. He just thinks he's coming for a visit. We haven't told him yet. Hi, Mr. Douglas. Hi, Chip. Hi, hi, hi you, Wilson. Hi, hi, hi. Boy, am I glad to see you. Ernie, Mr. Douglas has a question he'd like to ask you. Well, Ernie, uh, how would you like to stay here with us for a while? You mean live here? Like I, like I belonged here? Maybe you do belong here. That's what we want to find out. Wilson, too? Sure, Wilson, too. What do you say, Ernie? Here we go. I think I'm going to cry, dear. And I don't want to be in the middle of people when it happens. Don't. Right uh, here, huh? Yes. I'm sorry there were so many. After a full day at the office, I imagine you're tired of signing papers. Oh, I don't mind. I'm sure everything's going to work out fine. And who knows, maybe uh, one of these days we'll be able to adopt Ernie. Mr. Douglas. I know, there's no woman in the house, so we can't, but uh, maybe they'll change the rules or something. There, I guess that does it, huh? I believe so. Well, oh, oh uh, my pen. Oh, that, I'm sorry. Dad. Yeah, Rob. Uh, Dad, that restaurant called, and they think you better get there a few minutes before it if you don't want them to give away your table. So, uh, well, I, I think you better get moving. The restaurant? Yeah, you know, the, uh, the coach and steeds. You remember, you reserved a table for two? Did you, uh, forget to ask Miss Coulter? Well, yes. Uh, yes, I, yes, I forgot to mention it. <laughs> we were so busy signing the papers. Uh, are you busy tonight, Miss Coulter, or could you have dinner with me at the, uh... Uh, coach and steeds. The coach and steeds. I keep forgetting the name of the... Could you? Oh, I'd love to. Well, fine. I'll, uh... I'll get my hat. <laughs> I reserve the table next to the fountain, so make sure that's the one he gives you. But Dad, I can tell she likes it, so why don't you tell her she has great eyes? Robin, I appreciate what you're trying to do, but would you but please Dad, let me... But Dad, there can be no harm in at least to Rob. tell her she has... Well, uh, I'm sorry, but you're going to have to excuse me. I have a reservation at the uh, Coach and Steve's. Yes. Eyes. All set. All set.
kind of trouble you guys been in this time? Michael, Charlie, how come you think we're in trouble? Yeah, you didn't even look at us. When two kids come in and don't go straight to the icebox or ask for cake or brag about something they did at school, they're either in trouble or they've been in a fight. <laughs> yeah, you've been in a fight. <laughs> and you? You didn't use your left the way I told you. The guy was a back of chip that hit him there. The guy in front was hitting him in the stomach. What were you doing all the time? Cheering him on? He was busy fighting three girls. Three girls? Yeah, who wants to fight the boys? They don't have any rules. How many times have I told you guys not to fight? What? Plenty. And how many times have I told you if you got to fight, win? Well, I think we won. Anyway, the guys quit fighting and ran away. You can't tell who won with girls. They cry a lot. <laughs> don't you want to know what we were fighting about? Not especially. Okay. Come back here. <laughs> These girls said Ernie and me are real brothers because the county pays us to be his foster parents. So anyway, I was walking by Ernie's school on the way home. When I heard him saying all that rotten junk, I hit this kid in the stomach so I wouldn't break my knuckles like he told me. The girls was my own idea. <laughs> And then this one great big rotten girl said that you were a bunch of cheapskates to take the money. And then these two guys heard what she said. They said Ernie was a second-hand kid. I'm not a second-hand kid. Hey, my Uncle Charlie? You're the finest little knothead I've ever seen. Hey, no kidding? No kidding. A second-hand kid? That's what they called him. Chip happened to come by, and there was a little riot going on for a while, but the damage was done. The little squirt's really going to think he's a second-hand kid if this keeps up. And you sound as though you had a solution. Sure I have. Why don't we adopt him? Adopt who? That's what I like. A nice private conversation with nobody button in. <laughs> Are you talking about adopting Ernie, Dad? Yeah, well. Charlie, I've gone through this down at the county office I don't know how many times. We can't adopt Ernie. Why not? We a bunch of typhoid Marys or something? Because the adoptions people have a rule that there must be a woman in the home full time. If you're talking about a wife, say a wife. I'm not talking about a wife. Ernestine, uh, Miss Colder said uh, an aunt or a grandmother would do. It seems the county feels there should be a balance of sexes in the home to give the boy a true home life. Mm. Well, that lets us out. Even the dogs are boys around here. <laughs> Dad, you said an important word a minute ago. What did I say? Ernestine. Oh. Don't start that romance stuff again with your dad. No, don't you get it, Dad? You're going out with Miss Coulter once in a while anyway. Maybe she can think of some loophole that'll get Ernie in the house without a woman. All right, I'll talk it over with her again, but uh, don't tell Ernie about it because I don't think there's a chance. Uh, dad, uh, I know I sound like a pest, but, uh, well, honest, there are a few things you should know. For instance, uh, this lunch bit is okay, but uh, daytime will get you nowhere with the girls. Good night, Robbie. Dad, daylight is full of people. And even if you do get a girl alone someplace, uh, they don't like you to get too close to them in the light. You know, they're afraid you might see that they have sandpaper skin. Rob, I have some work to do, if you don't mind. But, Dad, moonlight's been great for so long because uh, it's not quite bright enough for a guy to see all the flaws. Why don't you put out an encyclopedia, Rock? You'd make a fortune. Come on, get him. Oh, he's gonna bite him. Oh, not again. No. Uh, Jam something Wilson beat him up a little bit. Yeah, I guess Wilson's a second-hand dog, too. Second-hand child. What a terrible thing to say. Well, kids can be pretty cruel sometimes. I know, Steve. But adoption, I don't know. Our rules are pretty strict. I know. There has to be a woman in the home. Well, maybe one of these days you'll get married. Then your problem will be solved. Maybe I will someday. But Ernie's problem is right now. At least it seems that way to him. He, uh, well, he just doesn't have any answers for the other kids. Do you remember Miss Miller? The lady who put Ernie in your home as a county ward? Oh, of course. I think I'll put it up to her. She may be able to come up with something. Uh, it'd be wonderful if she could. Steve. Whatever made you think of bringing me to a restaurant like this for lunch? It's charming. Oh. Well, just a hunch, I guess. <laughs> What, would you care for more coffee? Oh, no, thank you. I'd better get back to the office. Maybe I can catch Miss Miller. Uh, waiter. Sir Fortman here. 
Can I have the uh, check, please? Oh, yes, sir. Here you are, sir. I'm afraid there's just no way out, Mr. Douglas. Well, it just doesn't seem right. I mean, when so many children need homes. You see, Stephen, Mr. Douglas has the room. He has the income. He even has someone who stays here all day. I know that. I'm trying to think of some way to get around the letter of the law. There's no marriage in sight for you, Mr. Douglas. Uh, Ernie's problem is more immediate than that, Miss Miller. Yes, well, like yesterday at school. Chip, Ernie, get in here. They're out in the garage with the dogs, Uncle Charlie. What are they doing out in the garage with the dogs? Giving them a wax job? <laughs> yes! I'm sorry, Miss Miller. Uh, Uncle Charlie was in the Merchant Marine, and he uh, sort of runs the house like a ship. <laughs> now, as I was saying... Uh, oh, Dad. Excuse me. Oh, uh, Rob, you know uh, Miss Calder and Miss Miller. Hi, good to see you uh, again. Uh, Dad, have you seen Uncle Charlie's sewing box? Uh, yeah, I think it's on the table next to my chair in the living room. Oh, thanks. He's got a sew butt on the shirt for me. Oh. You uh, see, Miss Miller, we feel that we have a pretty well-run house here. Hey, Dad, that's his old sewing box. Uh, excuse me again. Uh, where's the new one we gave him for his birthday? I, I don't know, Rob. Uh, look, we're uh, busy in here. Oh, I'm sorry. Uncle Charlie! What are you hollering about? I'm right under your fat nose. <laughs> now, here's the list for the market. Now, you'll notice there's nothing on there that says about potato chips or cookies. So don't come back with a bunch of junk I can't use. How about a penny doodle bar? Bad for the teeth. Get lost. <laughs> you collecting for needy sailors or something? Oh, there's no sewing box. I need a button sewn on my shirt. On that shirt? How many times you have to wear something before you let me wash it? This goes in the washer with those filthy britches you wore under the car fix and the muffler. Chip, when I call you, you show up or I'll blast the barnacles off your seat. I, uh, I don't think he knows we're in here. Chip, I call you once more and there's going to be smoke coming from your sick house. Are you okay, little mate? Boy, he fell down the stupid stairs. Fell down the stairs. You hurt yourself, Chip? No, I'm okay. Hey, you folks been in there all the time? Oh, we were not dropping. Oh, I don't care about that. I didn't get a chance to vacuum in there. It must be a mess. <laughs> what were you doing upstairs when Robbie said you were in the garage? I have a shortcut to my room. Yeah, what kind of a shortcut? From the driveway, up the drain pipe, in through the window? Oh, well, yeah. Yeah, well, I got a bulletin for you, Tarzan. You break that green pipe and it's going to cost your dad a few bucks. And you break your head and I got to go visit you in the hospital. And I ain't got no time for that, Jazz. I got a house to run. I'm sorry, Mr. Douglas. I really am. I know. Thanks anyway, Miss Miller. I'll call you, Miss Stephen. All right, Steve. Fine. The things I put up with around here. Nobody comes home on time. Nobody comes to the table when I call them. I think no... Yes, Ernestine. What? Really? Who's on the phone? What, does she think it'll work? Who's calling this time of night? What's going on? Well, that's wonderful. Well, thanks for calling. I, you know, I'm glad you didn't wait till morning. Yeah, goodbye. Charlie, you're about to become a mother. <laughs> Let me understand you correctly. You want me to name Mr. O'Casey as the ipso facto mother in the Douglas household, Miss Miller? Yes, Your Honor. I've outlined the facts and reasons in the dossier on your desk. Yes, I've read it. I may say this whole approach strikes me as strange, to say the least. It hit me a little weird, too, Judge. <laughs> oh, it's okay, Steve. The judge here don't want me to put on a big phony act. Right, Judge? Right, Mr. O'Casey. Do you actually cook for the boys? Cook, wash, clean up... Uh, Ball them out, tell them bedtime stories, yell at them, wash for them, go to the market, deprive them of their privileges when they horse around too much, and all the wild stuff the other mothers in the neighborhood do. You left out one important word, Mr. O'Casey. I did? Oh, yeah, spank. <laughs> I never lay a hand on them. Uh, that's a father's job. That wasn't the word I had in mind. I meant love. Oh, heck, Judge, I, I love the little rats. Your Honor, uh, parental love in a house full of men may not be, uh, well, it might not be quite as open and affectionate as it would be with a woman around, but uh, it's there. I've seen it in action, Your Honor. The house is full of warmth and understanding. I've seen it, too. 
see. Now, you mentioned bedtime stories. What type of thing do you tell the boys? Well, Moby Dick is good. He was a whale. Thank you. That three bears and Cinderella junk is for the birds. You know, I make up a lot of stuff, like the one I tell them about, the stupid prince who uh, balled up the works by forgetting to put a bottom on the princess. The uh, princess is the name of a ship. Yes. To tell the truth, after reading Miss Miller's dossier, I had reached a conclusion, pending meeting the applicants, of course. Boy, what are they doing there? I'm getting nervous. Maybe they all went to sleep. Miss Coulter said that's the judge's chambers. I don't think they go to sleep in the judge's chambers. That was supposed to be a joke. Yeah, well, something keeps jumping around my stomach and makes me too scared to laugh. Boy, that's great, Judge. Uh, except there's one thing. Uh, What's that? Is it going to be written down that I'm lady of the house, like you said? You know, I still got a lot of friends in the Merchant Marine, and uh, if they get wind of this, why... Well, uh, I'll be the laughing stock of every quarter deck from here to Singapore. <laughs> It'll be written down, Mr. O'Casey, but I assure you that no one will see it except a few stuffed shirt lawyers like myself. Well, that's okay, then. Judge Leland, will Uncle Charlie actually be recorded as the lady of the house? Well, it's what we call a legal fiction. Something which is recognized as a fact, but which is not, in fact, a fact for legal purposes. Ain't it amazing how an education can get in the way of somebody saying something other people can understand? <laughs> well, uh, don't you think we ought to tell Ernie? Yes. Ernie? Ernie, would you come here, please? Can't you come in? No, not right now, dear. Don't you go over and stand by Judge Leland. He has something to tell you. Yes, sir? Ernie, first I want to ask you something. Would you like to live with the Douglas family? Forever, I mean. Boy, yeah. I mean, yes, sir. You will actually be a part of the family, which means that what they decide for you, you must do. If Mr. O'Casey thinks that you should be punished in some way, as a mother might punish you, you must obey. If Mr. Douglas gives you less allowance than the other boys, as a father might do because you're the younger, you must accept this. You'll find, Ernie, that the other boys and you will not always agree. Living in a new home is not one long, perpetual Christmas. Do you understand these things, Ernie? Yes, sir. Are you trying to tell me something, Mr. Judge? <laughs> yes, Ernie. There are a lot of papers to sign and a trial period to be gotten through. But as of this moment, I believe we can safely say your name is Ernest Stanley Douglas. Huh? What Judge Leland means, Ernie, is that from now on, Uncle Charlie will really be your Uncle Charlie. <laughs> and uh, I'll be your father from now on, Ernie. <laughs> Hi, Jim. Hi. That didn't take long. What happened? I'm your brother. Oh. Hey, let's go get a root beer. I got a quarter. Okay. <laughs> I uh, hope you weren't expecting too much. For Chip and Ernie, that was a wild emotional scene. Chip, you gotta quit fighting and being such a rotten dog. What do you ever do to you? Boy, Wilson, quit being such a scared dog. You got teeth almost as big as his. All I have to do is bite him back instead of running all the time. Why, Ernie, quit telling them to bite Tramp. I'm telling Tramp not to bite him. Yeah, but it's easier for you to say junk like that when your dog always wins the fights. <laughs> Wilson bites him back just once. They'll quit fighting. Yeah, well, don't tell Wilson to bite, Tramp. Tell him to bark at him or lean on him. No fight. I got an idea. Why don't we file Tramp's teeth down flat? No. Now, we're going to go over there and you're going to be nice to Wilson, okay? <laughs> Wilson wants to beat up him. He's kind of complex about getting hurt. I think he's kind of chicken, too. Hey, Dad, have you got a tie that'll go better with this suit? All right, fellas, come on, let's shove off. I made reservations for 7.30. Come on. Come on, you guys, I've been ready for hours. Well, everybody all set? You don't want to be late for the family celebration. Uh, celebration enough just for me not to cook. Never mind, we got a new member of the family around here. Hurry those guys up, will you? We'll get the car out, huh? Hey, come on, you guys. Dad's getting the car out. 
Hey, what's eating you guys? Ship sore because Wilson finally beat up Tramp. He didn't beat him up. He bit him while his back was turned and you laughed. <laughs> yeah, well, it was okay when Tramp was beating up Wilson. But the minute Tramp loses, you can't take it. Yeah? Well, hey, knock it off. Here you guys haven't been brothers for more than half a day and you're already fighting. He wants Wilson to sleep in here. Tell him he can. Well, Chip, he's our brother. I mean, our, our real brother. If he wants Wilson to sleep in here, why don't you let him? Well, where's Tramp going to sleep? In the garage? He's afraid Wilson will beat up Tramp again. I am not. You are so. That's enough. Now listen, you guys are going to get down in that car and you're going to act like nothing's wrong. You get the message? Yeah, okay. Yeah. You're not going to wreck this dinner for Dad and Uncle Charlie, so I don't want to hear one word about Tramp and Wilson in that restaurant. What are you all of a sudden, our parent? Do you know what they had to go through to get Ernie into this family? You have any idea? Okay, okay. I'll try to look like I can stand Ernie, just for Dad's sake. Me too, but it isn't going to be easy. <laughs> Dad, what you've got to do is find yourself a little place like this that you can call your restaurant. You know, some place to come to and talk about in later years. <laughs> I can see why Miss Coulter... Quiet, Robbie. Why aren't you fellas eating your dessert? What's the matter with the strudel and ice cream? It's the same as apple pie a la mode. <laughs> uh, Dad, what you should do next is take her dancing. Now, even if you can't think of anything to say, it, it's a good deal, you know, because you're holding her in your arms. You've been taking magpie pills or something. You guys sick? Uh-uh. No. Well, something's wrong. You hardly touched the rest of your dinner, and now you're pushing your dessert around. And those steaks you mauled around cost three ninety. Dad, uh, I think you and Uncle Charlie ought to leave them alone. Rob, would you let me handle this? Oh, no, honest, Dad, I think this is one of those psychological things where they really can't quite believe what's happened. Anything you say is just bringing it out in the open. Hogwash. <laughs> the little creeps are sore at each other. Don't worry about it, Charlie. Maybe Rob's right. Well, anyway, I think uh, if you fellas are through, we might as well go, huh? Mm. Uh, waiter, check, please. Yes, sir. Here you are, sir. Uh, the missus couldn't come tonight? Uh, no, not <laughs> tonight. <laughs> I've spent a more pleasant evening at a massacre. Yeah, well, I'll have a talk with the little lads. Hey, Ernie, look! <laughs> We're not mad at each other anymore. Now that you're friends again, everybody up to bed. Come on, up to bed. Hey, come on, 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 come now, we just got back from our celebration tonight. I'm sorry you couldn't be there with us. I, uh, just a minute, I think. What is it, Rob? Dad, if she thanks you for anything, uh, don't act surprised, because I forgot to tell you, I sent her a box of candy. You <laughs> I sent her a box of candy, and then I wrote, uh, uh, thanks for all the help. The world is better for me because you're in it. <laughs> I wrote what I told you, Dad, and then I signed it uh, affectionately, your Steve. Yours? Robbie? Dad, I'm sorry, but I know you like her, and I knew you'd never get around to doing anything romantic, so I sent her the box of candy. And I sent her two dozen yellow roses. <laughs> well, good night, Dad. Good night. <laughs> Hello, Ernestine. Uh, Robbie just had to... Oh, no, no, no. I, I wasn't trying to overwhelm you. <laughs> uh, Ernestine, uh, how about uh, going dancing tomorrow night? Uh, we could have dinner first and... Uh... Oh, fine. Fine, I'll pick you up around seven, huh? Good. And this time it's my idea. Oh, uh, nothing, Ernestine. Yeah, uh, fine, I'll see you tomorrow night. Good night. Or was it my idea? So this weird old king, he dug and dug and dug. But nobody told the stupid Jasper that he was digging in quicksand. So it kept caving in on him. Then this donkey came along. Hiya, Steve. We're almost finished. Everything all right now, boys, huh? Swell. Yeah, me. Well, it was a good day. Ernie, thanks for taking us on as your family. We'll try to do a good job for you. 
I think everybody's neat. Good night, boys. Mr. Douglas? Is it okay if I call you Dad? I knew there was something missing around here, and that was it. Sure, you can call me Dad. Good night, son. Good night, Dad. Good night, Jerry. Good night, Dad. Like I was saying, so this donkey looked at the fat-headed king and laughed. Well, nobody likes to be laughed at by a donkey. So the king threw a shovel at him. Well, the minute he did that, he began to sink and sink.